Chris Ammon, Christopher Arthur Ammon, 20 July 1943, 3 August 2016, was a New Zealand motor racing driver. He was active in Formula One racing in the 1960s and 1970s and is widely regarded as one of the best phone drivers never to win a championship, Grand Prix. His reputation for bad luck was such that fellow driver Mario Andretti once joked that if he became an undertaker, people would stop dying. Former Ferrari technical director Mauro Forgiri stated, Apart from driving, Chris Ammon also ran his own Formula One team for a short period in 1974. Away from Formula One, Ammon had some success in sports car racing, teaming with co-driver Bruce McLaren to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans race in 1966. Early Life Ammon was born in Bulls and attended Wanganui Collegiate School. He was the only child of wealthy sheep owners and Gayo and Betty Ammon. He learned to drive at the age of six, taught by a farm worker on the family farm. On leaving school, he persuaded his father to buy him an Austin 40 Special, which he entered in some minor local races and hill climbs along with practice on the family farm. He progressed to a 1.5-liter Cooper and then an old 2.5-liter Maserati 250F, but only began to draw attention when he drove the Cooper Climax T51 which Bruce McLaren had used to win his maiden Grand Prix. In 1962, Emin entered the Cooper for the New Zealand Winter Series, but was hampered by mechanical problems. However, Scuderia Velos entered him in a similar car, and, in the rain at Lakeside, he performed well. One of the spectators there was the English racing driver Reg Parnell, who persuaded Ammon to come to England and race for his team. In a test at Goodwood, Ammon continued to impress, and was on the pace in the Goodwood International Trophy and Aintree 200 pre-season races. Racing Career 1960s 1963 T3 T3 63 for the 1963 Formula One season, the Parnell team were using the year-old Lola MK4A, powered by 1962 specification Climax V8 engines. Ammon was teamed with the very experienced Morris Trintignant for the first race of the season at Monaco, and his Grand Prix career started with what was to become typical bad luck. Trintignant's Climax developed a misfire, so he took over Ammon's car. At the 1963 Belgian Grand Prix, Ammon was partnered by Lucien Bianchi and started ahead of him from 15th position. After nine laps, however, an oil fire ended his race. He continued to experience mechanical problems at the Dutch, Mexican, and German Grands Prix, and after an accident in practice for the Italian Grand Prix left him hanging out of his car's cockpit with three broken ribs, he missed both the Italian and United States rounds. Ammon usually qualified in the midfield and generally outpaced his teammates, who included his good friend Mike Halewood. His best results of the year were seventh at the French and British Grands Prix. During this time, however, Ammon's social life was attracting as much attention as his driving. He was a member of the Ditton Road Flyers, the social set named after the road in London where Ammon shared an apartment Parnell was nonetheless impressed with Ammon's results in what was regarded as less than competitive machinery and promoted him to team leader. Parnell died from peritonitis in January 1964, and his son Tim took over the team. 1964 In a series of four pre-season races in Britain and Italy, Ammon recorded three fifth places at Snetterton, Silverstone, and Syracuse. He failed to qualify for the first phone race of the season, the Monaco GP, but at the next race, the Dutch GP. He scored his first world championship points. The rest of his season, however, was blighted by mechanical problems. 1965 Parnell was offered BRM engines for 1965, but only if it ran Richard Atwood as its regular driver. Reluctantly, Parnell agreed and it would took Emmons' place. Spotting an opportunity, Bruce McLaren quickly signed Ammon for his new McLaren team, but when no second McLaren phone car materialized, 
Ammon could only drive in sports car races. At the French GP, Ammon rejoined Parnell to stand in for an injured Atwood. Ammon also competed in a Formula 2 race in Stuttgart and won. He returned to Germany for the German GP as second Parnell driver, but mechanical failure again forced an early retirement. His last drive before Atwood's return, a non-championship race in Enna, Sicily, also ended in retirement. 1966 1967 Ammon's first year with Ferrari did not begin auspiciously. En route to Brands Hatch for the pre-season Formula One race of champions, he crashed his road car and, following race practice, had to withdraw. Tragedy then struck the Ferrari team when Bandini died following a crash during the 1967 Monaco Grand Prix. Mike Parks broke both his legs at the Belgian Grand Prix and, in the aftermath, Ludovico Scarfiati went into temporary retirement. Ammon, therefore, became Ferrari's only driver for the rest of the season, until joined by Jonathan Williams for the final race in Mexico. Ammon scored his first podium in his first official outing for the Scuderia in Monaco, and at the end of 1967 had achieved four third places, finishing fifth in the Drivers' Championship, in what was going to be the most successful season of his career. Ammon's Ferrari contract also included sports car racing, and he began 1967 by winning the Daytona 24 Hours and 1000 Camonza events with Bandini in the 4-liter Ferrari 300. He finished the year partnering Jackie Stewart to a second place at the Boke 500, thereby clinching the Manufacturer's World Championship for Ferrari by one point over Porsche. 1968 1969 Ammon began 1969 with success driving the Dino engined 246 Tasmania in the Tasman series that included winning both the New Zealand and Australian Grands Prix. In straight fights, he beat new Gold Leaf Lotus team leader, Jochen Reint, into second in the races at Pukeko and Sandown. He would ultimately win the seven-race Tasman series, probably the best of the seven-year 2.5-liter International Formula Series in this country, and the nearest to world championship-level racing in New Zealand, with ferocious competition between Wright, Graham Hill, Ammon and Williams driver Piers Courage. It was actually much more serious racing than the McLaren-dominated Kenham Series in the U.S. in which the big sports cars required few gear changes and were essentially cruised to victory with little real competition, where the Tasman cars were essentially marginally lower power phone cars as difficult to drive as GP cars on unforgiving very dangerous narrow tracks. Ammon finished with four wins, two-thirds, and one retirement, but in Formula One his poor luck continued. Despite six starts from top six positions, he was only able to achieve a third place at the Dutch GP. Ferrari's phone V12 engine was too unreliable, and although its replacement had proven very fast in testing, it had suffered many mechanical breakages. Ammon had no reason to believe it would be any more dependable than the V12, so although the new engine was clearly more powerful, he decided to leave Ferrari for a Cosworth DFV-powered team. Ironically, the new Flat Minus 12 engine would become one of the best formula. Jackie Ikes, Ammon's old teammate, did return to Ferrari for 1970, after a successful sabbatical with Brabham gained Ikes second in the 1969 World Championship. Ikes saw Enzo Ferrari had secured huge backing from Fiat, who had taken partial ownership of the mark, and believed Ferrari would be a renewed team and an effective proposition. Ammon was more influenced by views of Jackie Stewart and Jochen Wright, who believed it was essential to be Ford DFV-powered to be competitive. In addition to Formula One, Ammon also drove for Ferrari in the 1969 International Championship for makes, partnering Pedro Rodriguez to a fourth place in the Boke 500 at Brands Hatch and coming second at the 12 Hours of Sebring but retiring from the 1,000 Cam Nürburgring and 1,000 Cam Monza races, all in the Ferrari 300. He also drove in a few Canham races. His last race for Ferrari would be the 1971 1,000 Cam Monza, where he finished as runner-up.
1970s, CIS, 1970. For the 1970 Formula One season, Ammon made what was to be the first of several moves to smaller, newer teams. March Engineering had been formed the previous year to build custom chassis for Formulas 2 and 3, but quickly moved into foam, designing and building the March 701. Ammon and Siffert were signed as drivers, with IndyCar driver Mario Andretti making an occasional appearance in a third car. March also sold their 701 chassis to Terrell, where Jackie Stewart drove it to its first victory in that year's Spanish GP. Ammon won the pre-season Silverstone International Trophy, but once the phone season began he found himself prevented from converting good qualifying positions into good results. He qualified second behind Stewart's Terrell March for the season opening South African Grand Prix only for his own March to overheat within 14 laps. Ammon then qualified sixth for the Spanish Grand Prix only for his March's Ford Cosworth DFV engine to expire within 10 laps. He qualified and ran second in the 1970 Monaco Grand Prix until his suspension failed 20 laps from the finish. This was the race where Ammon refused to drive unless his entry number was changed from 18 the number under which his then teammate Lorenzo Bandini had crashed and died in Monaco to 28. Ammon's close second place from a third place start at the 1970 Belgian Grand Prix finally gave the Marchworks team their first points finish. At that race, Ammon set fastest lap at over 152 miles per hour, a lap record which still stands as of 2016, as it was the last race on the full length Spa Franco Champs circuit. However, after qualifying fourth for the next race, the Dutch Grand Prix, his car's clutch broke after just one lap. Ammon duplicated his Belgian result at the 1970 French Grand Prix. 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 After a disappointing performance in the British GP at Brands Hatch where Ammon finished fifth, after being outqualified by Tyro Ronnie Peterson in a private 701 on the same tires, conflict with team boss Max Mosley over the non-delivery of three-quarters of Ammon's expected pay for the season saw him provided with inferior DFB and two backmarker 7. At Watkins Glen in the USP he was robbed of a probably certain victory, in the opinion of March designer Robin Hurd, by a puncture. By the end of the year, disagreements with March co-founders Mosley and Robin Hurd meant that Ammon had decided to move to another relatively new team, Matra. 1971 In 1971, Ammon, now driving for the Matra factory team, once again scored a pre-season victory, this time at the Argentine Grand Prix. Once the Formula One season had begun, he managed to convert a third-place start at the Spanish GP into a third-place podium finish and scored a couple of fifth places in the South African and French GP. Apart from these results, however, his run of poor phone returns continued. He had a major accident at the Nürburgring, and it sidelined him for the next race at the Osterreichring. At the Italian GP, he qualified in pole position and despite a poor start to the race looked as if he would capitalize on it until the visor on his helmet became detached. Ammon had to slow to avoid risking a major accident, thereby allowing other drivers to catch and overtake him. He finished the race in sixth place, scoring just one championship point. During the year Ammon also competed in the non-championship Quester Grand Prix at the new Ontario Motor Speedway, where he qualified second and, despite suffering a puncture during the race, managed to finish fourth. In the Tasman series, Emin started from fourth at the Levin Circuit, and in the race, he battled with David Oxton and John Cannon but managed to finish third. Emin's third race at Wigram Airfield starting fifth, and spun at the start to drop him to the back of the field, but managed to climb up to fifth. 1972 In the 1972 Formula One season, Ammon, again driving for Matra, achieved a handful of points scoring finishes, but only one podium appearance 
at the French GP. Here he achieved the fifth and final pole position of his career, and was leading the race until a puncture forced him to pit. However, he climbed back through the field, breaking the circuit's lap record to finish third. With the money he had made from motorsport, Abbott decided to set up a racing engine firm with former BRM engineer Aubrey Woods. Ammon Racing Engines supplied Formula 2 engines to a few drivers, but the company quickly became too expensive to run and was sold to March for a loss. Matra decided to end their participation in Formula 1 at the end of 1972, so Ammon found himself looking to return to March as a driver. The place, however, was given to Jean Pierre Gerrier, purportedly for financial reasons. Ammon therefore signed for another recently formed phone team. Techno. 1973. T3. Techno had entered phone the previous year, having been a successful chassis builder for other formulae, and had developed a potentially powerful flat 12 for phone. Their first year in phone proved to be dismal, however with considerable backing from Martini Rossi they had jumped at the chance to sign Ammon and allocate David York, the former Van Wall and Golf GT40 team manager, to run the team and commission two new chassis designs by former Lotus and McLaren mechanic. Alan McCall, who had worked on Clark and Holmes' phone cars, and unproven British designer Gordon Fowell for a more radical backup design, in the hope he would help transform their performance. While McCall's car was built rapidly, testing it was more time-consuming, and after its non-appearance, for the Spanish GP, Ammon and team manager David York met with Enzo Ferrari to see if Ammon could be released from his contract. York rejected the release, and Ammon admits he would not have left Ferrari if offered the drive for a season. Unfortunately, the team went from bad to worse and wasn't able to field the Techno Peon 123-6 until the fifth GP of the season, the Belgian GP. Ammon managed to finish in sixth position. At Monaco, the car qualified a useful twelfth, and chassis felt good, but Chris was unhappy with the car. He decided to concentrate on the undeveloped Gordon Fowle Goral car. This was against the view of the Techno team and the Pedaranzi engine builders and Martini Rossi, who required the car and driver to appear at races. Ammon commented at the time that it was the best chassis I've ever sat in. It too proved virtually undrivable. Ammon refused to drive the McCall Techno in the Swedish or German GPS and withdrew from the Austrian GP after qualifying. By the time of the Austrian GP, four races from the end of the season, Ammon's patience had run out and he left the team. He would later claim that the months he spent with the team felt like ten seasons. Terrell offered Ammon a third car of the five in which to drive the last two races of the season. After a mediocre first outing at the Canadian GP, he and Jackie Stewart withdrew from the final race of the year, the United States GP following the death of their teammate Frank Wassevert during qualifying. 1974 For the 1974 phone season, Ammon revived Chris Ammon Racing. Gordon Fowle designed the car, the Afone 101, which featured a single central fuel tank, titanium torsion bars, and a forward driving position. Structurally, however, it proved to be weak and was not ready for Afone appearance until the fourth race of the season, the Spanish GP. Ammon was only able to qualify 23rd, thanks to brake disc vibration that only became worse with the tires for the wet race that followed. Despite cautious driving, a brake shaft finally broke and Ammon was forced to retire after 22 laps. Following further work and testing, Ammon returned for the Monaco GP and qualified 20th. Further problems and illness meant Ammon was not able to reappear with the Phone 101 until the Italian GP, three races from the end of the season, but this time he was unable to qualify. That sealed the fate of both the car and Chris Ammon racing leaving Ammon to drive the season's last two races with the faltering BRM team. He would later reveal that he had turned down a chance to join the Brabham team earlier in the season. 1975-1976 And Sine's first race of the season was the South African GP, where Ammon qualified 18th 
and showed a revival of form, climbing to seventh place, in the old Ensign 974 and contesting sixth with Mario Andretti in the Parnelli Ford in the last laps before a last-minute refueling stop left him 14th. Thereafter results began to improve, with Ammon qualifying 17th and finishing 8th in the USA West GP, qualifying 10th and finishing 5th in the Spanish GP, and then qualifying 8th for the Belgian GP. More points then seemed likely from the race until his car lost a wheel 19 laps from the finish and Ammon was lucky to escape unhurt from the ensuing accident. He then achieved a third-place grid position start for the Swedish GP using a Nicholson rebuilt Cosworth for the first time and in the race looked as if he would join Tyrell drivers Jody Schechter and Patrick DePaler on the podium until suspension failure threw him from the track after 38 laps. Ammon had again been lucky to escape serious injury and decided to miss the next race, the French GP. He returned for the British GP, qualifying in sixth and running fourth in the race when his Ford Cosworth DFV engine developed a water leak. Rather than risk losing an engine, his team called him in to retire. At the German GP problems dogged his attempts to qualify well, but it was Nicky Lauda's crash during the second lap of the race that had a far greater impact. Ammon refused to restart the race and none fired him from the team. Ammon declared his retirement from the sport and returned to New Zealand. I'd seen too many people fried in racing cars at that stage. When you've driven past Bandini, Schlesser, Courage and Williamson, another shunt like that was simply too much. It was a personal decision. Ammon, on his retirement in 1976, however, Walter Wolf contacted Ammon, and persuaded him to drive for his Wolf Williams team in the North American races near the end of the season. After recording some promising times in preparation for the Canadian GP, however, Hammond was involved in a heavy collision with another car during qualifying, and once again was lucky to walk away unharmed. He then did not take part in either the Canadian or United States Grands Prix. 1977 Ammon turned down an offer of a full-time phone drive for 1977, but did attempt a return to Canham Racing in 1977 with a Wolf Dallara W. Dunn. However, after only one race he quit, saying, I'm just not enjoying this anymore. His place was taken by the young and then unknown Canadian Gilles Villeneuve, whom Ammon would, later that year, recommend to Enzo Ferrari. In the meantime, Ammon returned once again to New Zealand, this time to retire from phone motor racing for good. 2000s, 2000s, 2003. Ammon came out of retirement for a one off appearance in the 2003 Dunlop Targa New Zealand with motorsport commentator Murray Walker as his navigator. The pair completed the week long Auckland to Wellington Tarmac Rally in a Toyota Camry Sportivo the same car previously used by Walker and Colin Bond in Australia's Targa Tasmania. Retirement After his retirement from phone, Ammon dedicated himself to running the family farm in New Zealand's Manawatu district for many years. After retiring from farming, he lived in Taupo in New Zealand's North Island. In the early 1980s, he became more well-known in New Zealand from test driving vehicles, on the TV motoring series Motor Show, and later consulted for Toyota New Zealand, tuning the 1984 Toyota Corolla and subsequent cars for sale there. He also appeared in TV commercials for the company, where much was made of the acclaim he won from Enzo Ferrari. Ammon participated in the 2004 Energy Wise rally where he won ahead of Brian Cowan. Ammon drove a Toyota Prius for the event. In the 1993, Queen's birthday honors Ammon was appointed a member of the Order of the British Empire for services to motorsport. Ammon was involved in the design of the upgraded Topo Motorsport Park circuit, used for the New Zealand round of the 2006 7 Aeon Grand Prix season in January 2007. At the New Zealand Festival of Motor Racing in 2011, Ammon's life and career were honored with a selection of his cars being driven and also used the event to raise funds for the Bruce McLaren Trust. Ammon was also honored at the festival in January 2013.
Death Ammon died in Rotoruwa Hospital on 3 August 2016, aged 73, of cancer. He was survived by his wife they married in 1977, their three children and their grandchildren. One of his sons, James, is a qualified high-performance personal trainer. He trained Central District's Stags cricket team and was revealed to be Brendan Hartley's personal trainer. Legacy Despite never winning a championship Formula One Grand Prix, Ammon won eight non-championship GP, the Silverstone International Trophy, the 1000K Monza, the Daytona 24 Hours, the Tasman Series, and perhaps most significant of all, the famous 24 Hewers du Mans alongside Bruce McLaren. These races included many of Ammon's otherwise more successful fellow Formula One drivers. Ammon also remains the only driver from New Zealand and Oceania to have raced for Scuderia Ferrari in Formula One. In Formula One, Chris Ammon took part in 96 Grands Prix, achieving five poles, leading 183 laps in seven races, reaching the podium 11 times, and scoring a total of 83 championship points. Ammon holds the record for the most different makes of car raced by a Formula One World Championship driver, with 13. A biography Forza Ammon by journalist Ian Young charts Ammon's racing career and gives some insights into his personal life. The book makes clear one point on which Ammon himself disagrees with most commentators, the issue of his bad luck. Ammon has pointed out, on several occasions, that he competed for a decade and a half in Formula One and survived some serious accidents, notably in 1976, whilst others, including friends like Bruce McLaren, suffered serious injury and death. In 2008, motorsport journalist Alan Henry rated Chris Ammon as his 13th greatest driver. Reflecting on the 1968 racing death of Jim Clark, Ammon said, If this can happen to Jimmy, what chance do the rest of us have? I think we all felt that. It seemed like we'd lost our leader. In 1995, Ammon was inducted into the New Zealand Sports Hall of Fame. Ammon's name has been given to the Toyota Racing Series Drivers' Championship Trophy and the International Scholarship to support drivers who win his trophy to further their careers in single-seater racing. The Toyota Racing Series serves as motorsports version of winter ball in New Zealand during January and February. Following his death, his name was also lent to the Manfailed Auto Course in Failding, Manawatu. Racing record Formula One World Championship results Key races in bold indicate pole position. Races in italics indicate fastest lap at fastest lap at that bat 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 Non-championship Formula One results Key races in bold indicate pole position. Races in italics indicate fastest lap at fastest lap at that bat 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 Complete Tasman Series results. Key races in bold indicate pole position. Races in italics indicate fastest lap at fastest lap at that bat 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 bat